Welcome to Bar Charts, series of webinars designed to educate you about a variety of market concepts, inform you of the features and tools Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, and finally to offer you some traders' insight to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's subject, I'll just say the unusual options volume and its critical role in trading. Now, as a trader, volume is a powerful technical tool. It provides us with an insight to the emotion or sentiment of particular security with price being the record of that emotion. Now, options volume is no different. Large institutional traders use the leverage power of options to make large bets. They use options to hedge or preserve capital investments, as well as rolling forward positions excuse me, options positions that are a continuous of a position which is trending in their favor. A bar charts unusual options volume page helps us discover which types of positions these traders are employing. Uh, hello everyone, my name is John Rowland and I'm Bar Charts Head of Trading Education. And as I said in the introduction, we're going to look at the unusual options volume page to unlock clues to the to these traders on what they're doing, but also to use the unusual options page as a kind of an instant snapshot of the broader market sentiment and possibly discovering some trading opportunities. Now, before we get to that, please welcome my partner. And our moderator, Bar Charts Project Director, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Good afternoon, John. How are you? I am doing fine on this beautiful, glorious day in North Carolina. Well, good for you. It's it is a beautiful day, isn't it? And yes, it is. I know you have a lot of interesting information to get to today for our users. We uh kind of we had a few similar webinars that you've done like this in the past, but this one you're gonna bring a, a different twist to it if if I understand correctly. Yeah, right. hopefully we'll 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 kind of freshen up on what we've done in the past, but I really kind of want to reiterate a lot of the other things that we've done as well. So yeah, so you ready to get to it? Let's get to it. Okay. All right, so let's do this. Whoops. Just remember that always uh, today's session is for educational purposes only and decisions to buy, sell, hold, or trade securities, commodities, or any other investment involves risk and invest made on the advice of a qualified trader, uh, professional. <laughs> um, let me say that options trading is not for anyone and you should definitely um, consult with a qualified financial prof professional whenever you take on a new trading regimen. And under no circumstances shall we be liable for any losses or damages that you or anyone else incurs as a result of trading or investment activity based on information that you receive through barchart.com and or our services. Okay. So that's kind of our little, whoops, work for today. And here we go. All right. So main page, right? And I'm gonna just go to where it says options and we're gonna be working on this page is the unusual options volume page, okay? So what does this page really represent? So what it is, it's the difference between current options volume and the average daily volume over the last past month. And so an increase in this difference will alert us that there are uh, activity in a particular stock or security. And one of several scenarios could be in play. And so what are those scenarios that we could be talking about? Well, first is large traders make bets prior to or in conjunction with a major news event, you know, i.e., you know, earnings. And that could set us up to looking for larger price movements. Also, we're looking at, we could also start looking at um, 
volume in the underlying asset that could often confirm or enhance this possible price movement. So making large bets based on some kind of uh, anticipated price movement, be it um, from earnings, or we could also look at you know technical analysis in terms of trends and breakouts, you know maybe structure breakouts for a potential opportunity. Two is large traders typically use options to manage their risk. And this is called hedging. This is a type of risk management that allows these traders to buy insurance to price movements that are in opposite direction of their current investment. Many times when options put buying increases, this could be an indication that traders sentiment or emotion to that particular security is that prices are going to fall. Now, in other words, they're buying insurance to protect their capital investment. And finally, um, scenario number three is sometimes the general public or retail traders become active in options because they believe a large price movement is going to occur. But they kind of tip their hands. And that's because they typically purchase out of the money options. And that's because they're cheap. And so the thought I that comes to mind and should come to your mind is you know, a lot of these meme stocks, um, you know, the game stocks, the Bed Bath and Beyonds, uh, the AMCs, right? They're trying to play that gamma squeeze, right? They're trying to get, uh, they're looking for these way out of the monies, these home runs. So we'll try to find um, some good examples of all of these today. And as I walk through, um, the page, how we can use the page. Um, I will tell you that, you know, this is live trading and live markets. And today is kind of a boring day in terms of options activity. So I do have some good examples for you, but maybe not the best for trading opportunities. All right, so just be here with me today. So let's walk through the individual inputs and hopefully I can show you those clues uh, that we were talking about. So first is our symbol. Now, you know, again, just a symbol of the, the security that we're trading. Just remind you, if you can go to the plus sign here, you have a way to instantly get to uh, some other statistical data, for instance, technical analysis, right? Or uh, if you don't know what the company does, you, know, you can look at their profile, which is really a nice feature. I use this a lot. Um, name of the stock the last trading price, um, the percent change of the stock price so far today, excuse me, the change, and then the percent change so far today. And then this, our volume. So this is the volume of all options across all strikes and expirations. The open interest, again, this is the total open interest of all options that are related to this particular security. Uh, the next column is our implied volatility rank. Now, this is how, uh, this one is, how does the current at the money options implied volatility uh, compared to, let's say, a historical one year implied volatility? So this one, this column, kind of tells us a couple of stories. First is that low rank implied volatility typically tells us that options are priced fairly or maybe maybe even be inexpensive. In high ranks options, vo rank volatility um, are typically when options are very expensive or maybe overvalued. And this could lead us to selecting the type of option strategy that takes advantage of, let's say, cheap options, maybe debit type option plays, or expensive options or credit option plays, okay? The monthly percentage volume, right? How much has today's volume increased or decreased compared to a one month average, right? Again, this is how our page is initially sorted. 
So I will give you uh, a little bit of a direction here is now we're here, we're at, I'm one o'clock here on the East Coast, it's noon in Chicago. And you know, this page is showing us, um, you know, some large uh, monthly in, increases over monthly volume average. Now, if I go to, let's say volume, and I just sort by volume, uh, volume of options. If you come into this page early in the morning, let's say within the first half an hour, hour of trading, you know, the market is, has yet to really start actively getting traded. Yes, there are opportunities to be done. And some of our more actively traded option markets, and know there's widely held stocks, in the case here, Apple, you can see that um, our option volume is actually lower than our average monthly average. So that's kind of telling us that, first of all, the, you know, the market is just waking up and that you typically will see a lot more red in the beginning than you will see greens. But if you turn on the screen and you come in, let's say in the first half an hour, and you do see you know, some greens in some of these more widely held stocks, then that is more significant. But you know, our process, what we're gonna work on is we're gonna look at those st stocks that are maybe not typical or highly widely held and look for these high and in, in volume increases. All right, uh, the next two is our call volume and our put volume. Again, when we look at this, the number of options that have traded um, today, again, this could be a clue to our large volumes of one side or another and that could lead us to that emotion or sentiment that these traders believe price is going to do. So for instance, this one floor, right? You have a 20,000 call volume option. That could be an indication that there might be a bullish sentiment, but we're gonna do other investigations in this process. And what we might discover is that this large call, call volume might be just part of the regular process of a, reg, uh, a large trader as they roll their position or as they liquidate a position. In other words, they might've already had a call position on and today they are liquidating that. And that's important for us when we look for trading opportunities. Now, finally, we have the put call volume ratio. Now this input is the ratio of number of puts traded divided by the number of calls traded. So generally speaking, when we're looking at stocks, we'll typically see that there's about three calls uh, traded versus two puts. And so if we did that math, two puts divided by three calls, that would give us a value of 6.7, or excuse me, 0.67. So that's kind of our neutral, right? Um, when we look at this call, put call volume ratio. So when we start getting above, let's say 0 0.7, 0 0.8, or getting closer to one, that is telling us that there's a lot more put activity. And again, would be more inclined to looking for a sentiment or emotion that market believes that prices are gonna go down. And as price moves closer to zero, well, that also indicates that there's a greater bullish uh, sentiment in terms of this particular stock. Again, we'll still need to do some details in terms of discovering what is going on in our call and put volume to make sure that's exactly what we're seeing. But Again, starting right out from the gate, what I'm gonna start looking for is where I see these large put or call volume ratios that have been distorted. In other words, right, again, a lot of call volume, no put volume, or a lot of put volume and no call volume. And that's where I will start my investigation. Now, the other thing we can do is we can look at the volume versus the open interest in terms of a ratio as well. And again, for some of these uh, 
larger stocks or in terms of open interest, a kind of a general rule to look for is again, you know, in the early session is if I see a volume that is, let's say, 15% or 10% to 15% of 20% of the current open interest, and these are contracts that have been opened that have yet to be closed, that also would be an opportunity to look for, um, investigate in this particular stock. So not only high volume on a percentage basis, but maybe sometimes that high volume on a percentage basis would not attract us, but the volume to open interest, that ratio, in other words, somewhere around, you know, somewhere between 10 to 15 to 20 percent would be uh, another clue for us. So, for instance, in this floor, uh, you can see that, you know, we're at about 20, 25 percent of the open interest. Now, if you see, you know, a volume that is equal to or greater than the open interest, then that is definitely something that we want to investigate, right? So, uh, again, you know, this is just kind of a part of a process for us. All right. So the first uh, thing that I saw, and then again, a lot of these things I look at this morning before we got set up. So I want to kind of go through these one by one in terms of those scenarios. So the first one that I did notice here is General Mills. And this is a, you know, this is a large cap stock. And this is not a stock that typically pops up on the options volumes page it's just right now again look at um our volume to our open interest right we're above that 10 percent. we're probably around 15 percent and on volume based on our one month volume average you know we're up 300 percent. so this is very significant for us and when i look at the call put volume i can see that there's a lot of call volume. That's telling me that when I go into an investigation, I'm probably going to look for or find a bullish sediment in terms of General Mills. And so how do I do that? Well, I go to details. And once I click on details here, what this does is it moves me down now and shows me all the different expirations, dates, and it shows the breakdown of the put and call volume as it relates to those different expiration dates. And so what we can see here is for today, in the September 16, there's 10,000 call volume and only 210 put volume. That ratio is almost zero, right? That would be something that would be very interested to me. Now, the other part on this page that we can start to think about is we can look at what is called the put open interest and the call open interest and that ratio. And what we can see here is that up until today, we have seen more put open interest than call open interest and that that ratio is very high. Now, this might be an indication that there is a bearish sentiment to General Mills, or what I said to you before is large institutional traders might be hedging a capital investment by buying uh, puts. Now, when we go into side of this example, we'll probably see that example. Again, I can look at that same ratio again down here, and again, looking at our volume versus our call open interests, right? We have 11,000 volume and our call open interest is 40,000. So what does that represent? Well, that's what, help me out. It's about 25, almost 30% of the call open interest. So that would be something that would be uh, would interest me. So I'm gonna go into the September 16 and look for that volume, that call volume and see where it's at. And again, what we see here in General Mills, a stock that is now trading $77.86, I see a large amount of volume, call volume that was in the $80 call and a much greater in 
the 8250 call. Notice that our previous open interest is relatively low. So what this is kind of telling us is that a large institutional trader has bought both the 80 and $82, $50 calls, which is kind of giving us a clue that they believe that the market is gonna go higher. Now, again, remember we talked about the open interests that we see a lot of open interests perhaps in uh, the put side and not as much as in the call side. Again, if we look at these strikes, $75 strike, $72.50 strike, the, this uh, open interest could be more inclined with a, an insurance policy or protection to the downside. So from this point here, what I'm probably gonna do is go to the chart. And here is a chart of General Mills. And you can see that you know, General Mills has been in a nice uptrend since about March. And certainly since that June bottom that we've seen in a lot of our equity indexes, uh, it's made us really nice rally. Now, again, let me just talk about this in terms of what we see in today's trading activity. Right? We are getting close to $80. If I look at this in terms of a historical value, we can see that we are making all-time highs. So what we're probably seeing is a large institutional trader who has now believed that General Mills has broken out of its most recent all-time highs and is now is going to continue to move higher. We saw that there was a lot of activity in the $75 put previously. Well, that would put us right there. And again, if I was long this stock, that $75 put would probably be a good area where I might be concerned the price or the trend has reversed. So we have the 80 and we have the $82 call, uh, $82.50 call. So how can we use this as a trading opportunity. So if we believe in the story, what we see here, we see an uptrend, we see the market is breaking out of a range. We see a large institutional trader is buying calls that are out of the money, not too far out of the money. Well, we could start thinking about employing some uh, bullish uh, trades. Now the first one that I would think about would be a covered call. In this case, what I would do would be buying the General Mills today. And because that institutional trader is buying the uh, 8250 call, they could be inflating that price. And that might give me an opportunity to sell them that call and do a cover call spread. Now, in this particular trade, if I bought General Mills right now and sold that $82.50 call, right? My potential return, if this trader is right, would be about 6.2% over the next 23 days. That's not a bad return in terms of the covered call spread for 22 days, 23 days. Now, the other thing you could do is maybe look at. Um, credit or debit spreads. Now, again, what we wanna do in this case is we're gonna look at our implied volatility in terms of General Mills. And so let me go back to my options prices. And we can see that, yeah, we have a little bit of inflated implied volatility, but you know it's relatively low. In terms of historical, yes, it's in the high end. Again, I could look at my rank on General Mills. Oh, where is it? Did it pop, fall down? There it is, right? And we can see that under our unusual volumes page, excuse me, that our rank is quite low, right? It's from 28, 28 and a half percent. 
So this is telling us that options are relatively fairly priced. So I probably would look for buying uh, opportunities in some kind of spread. And so again, if I go back to my General Mills, uh, I'd probably be looking at debit spreads. And so what I might look at is buying a call that is close to current price and selling that 8250, which is where our institutional trader is trading. And that, in this case, looks like a little bit better trade for me in terms of the spread here is close to $5 and the cost is only $1.75, so about three to one. That's a nice ratio for me. And if I'm correct, I'm gonna make $3.25 as long as price is above 82.50 at expiration, and that would be a max profit of around, you know, 185%. So I think in terms of General Mills, here we're seeing an institutional trader who is confirming that they believe price is going higher, and here's a way we can kind of ride their coattails. All right. So the second example I wanted to show you is, let's see. Looks like it fell down. So let's do this. Um, let me go to change volume here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Energy transfer, right? All right. So let's walk through this process one more time. Okay. So energy transfer has a million open interests, right? What did we say? Well, you know, we kind of want to see an increase in volume and also this volume as it relates to our open interest. Now it's not there yet, it's not 10%, but in terms of volume increase, it is above its monthly average. So it is kind of in play. Now, what do we look for in terms of our call and put ratio, right? Well, we see there's a lot more call action going on than put action and that our ratio is very low. So that might indicate to us that there is a trade here in terms of a bullish trade. Now, if I go to the details and I look at the distribution of call volume, I see that there's a lot of call volume in the September 2 weekly calls, right? Only nine days to expiration, and there is 35,000. Now, on this case, as terms of trading opportunities, this one may be not a great example of looking for a trading opportunity, but I think this is a really good example of the institutional traders who use the leverage power of options. So think about this. If a trader is buying 35,000 options and every option represents 100 shares, well, that would be 300 and well, three million, three and a half million shares, right? That's that's a lot of shares. But the cost for them to take control of those three and a half million shares is only about, looks like about seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars. Think about how much they would have to pay if they were going to buy three million shares, right? They'd have to pay you know, a lot of money. So this is kind of an institutional trader is telling you they believe that energy transfer price is gonna go up about, in this case, only about 1%, but what they're really doing is they're taking control of a stock for a very short period of time without a large capital investment. So as far as a trading opportunity, you know, what could you do? Maybe you buy the stock, you know, ride those coattails, Maybe you look for some um, credit spreads on this one, right? Again, you know, we have a uh, little bit of uh, elevated um, applied volatility. And if I go back to our volume, let's see how that rank is. Again, low rank. So I'm not really interested in doing credit spreads. Probably want to do some kind of a debit spread spread. So again, this is more of an example of a trader using the leverage of options. All right. So the other one, 
that I saw. Let's go back to. All right, so schmuckers, uh, you know, grape jelly, right? Um, again, you know, a larger cap stock, kind of where I like to be. You know, not that there's not opportunities in some of these smaller stocks, certainly some, you know, potential home runs. But I kind of like to stay with these larger cap stocks. All right, so let's go through our process, all right? So our open interest is 15,000. Uh, our volume is now approaching 4,700. Again, you know what, 25% of open interest. Our volume um, on a comparative monthly is over up over 260%. And in this case, what we see is it's in the puts. Right, and our put call ratio is very, very high. So, what is this kind of telling us? Well, this might be an indication that our trader has an emotion or a sentiment that they feel that this stock price could go down. And so, if we go into the details of this trade, again, we see the September 16. And we see that volume is in puts and in this strike. And so if I go to that, here is that volume and it's at the 140 strike. Now, what is kind of interesting is that that strike is very close to current price. Again, another kind of hint that it's more likely an institutional trader because they tend to look at strikes that are closer to current price or just out, you know, just at the money, maybe 5% above or below current price. But what I do see here is that there is an already established open interest. Now, again, look at the total open interest of all the different strikes we have, both puts and calls. You know, this is definitely an outlier in terms of open interest. And that open interest is around 2,700. Now, the other aspect that I said to you is that could a trader be buying or selling or active in options because of the fear or anticipating a news event and the news event that we said that is a huge catalyst for a lot of options trades is our earnings and you can see that earnings for this particular stock was actually a couple days ago right or yesterday so again what we want to kind of do is we want to be like Sherlock Holmes we want to kind of break down this trade we want to think about what are the ramifications of this trade is our trader being bearish thinking that price is going to go down or in this case what i think what we're seeing is i'm going to go here into the uh, links page i'm going to look at the historical price action of the 145 call right it's giving me this is the opposite of what we just found but we can see that our call option increased notice our open interest increased prior to the earnings event and today yesterday earnings came out and now our trader is buying uh, these puts that are just below the market. So again, what could this be telling me? Well, this might be a trader that had made an investment being long calls, still believes in the market, but he didn't get that pop that he thought he was going to get based on earnings. Now we'd have to go and look into earnings and see if it was a hit or a miss. The fact that it's up, it's telling me that it was a hit, but it just didn't give them the pop that they wanted. And so what this trader was doing was they had bought the 145 calls, anticipating that price was probably going to rally. And I'm guessing, you know, because it's above this most recent high, our January and our May high. And I think on a historical basis, you can see 
that that 150 was probably their target. That's what they thought they were going to get out of this trade. So now what is this trader doing? Well, he's probably buying some downside protection in terms of this trade. In other words, what they're doing is they're doing kind of a straddle. So this is not really a great trading opportunity for us, but again, what we could do is look, watch this trade over the next couple of days and see which way that Schmuckers, Schmuckers, <laughs> excuse me, uh, moves as it gets above this 145 or if it breaks down below 140. And that might lead us to another trading opportunity. Okay. All right, so I'm getting through a lot of these examples. So that's a good thing. All right, unusual options volume again. Um, so this one, Regis, right? And this is, again, this is a small cap stock. It's only $1.37 stock. Again, if we do that process, right, the open interest is around uh, 51,000 and you know the volume today is you know 13,000 about you know 30% just a little bit less big big change in a day to day volume right almost up 600% and again when we look at the ratio here you know huge put volume so again on a small cap stock here, it's probably not an institutional trader, it's probably somebody, an individual trader, or maybe even a retail trader. And what do we see? Well, we're looking at the December 16 monthlies, where we have this 12,000 volume. And let's stack, let's not stack these, let's go side by side, it's a little easier to see. And what is somebody doing? Well, it looks like they're buying $1 strike puts. So basically what they're doing is they're making a bet that this company is probably going to go out of business between now and the end of the year. Now, what is Regis Corp? I think it's a salon, hair, beauty salon. I think, um, you know, um, you know, $8 cuts or, you know, some of those that uh, some of those commercials you see in TV where, you can go and get a haircut. Um, so, you know, again, is this a great trading opportunity? Uh, probably not, you know, because it's a small cap, but it's clearly an example of, you know, a large amount of volume that is trading below current price and a bearish sentiment in terms of this stock. Now, is there a lot of value in this trade? Probably not. Okay, and so let's go back to our options volume page. And final one that I wanna kinda of go through is this floor, right? Again, if we walk through that process, 81,000 open interest, 20,000 volume today, right? Nice uh, percentage up 600%, over 600% and volume on a daily basis. 20,000 call volume, our, in, our first indication would be, hey, maybe this is a bullish trade setup. Go to the details. You see that the call volume is in the January. Now this is out, this is now starting to become a little bit interesting because somebody is investing in a lot amount of calls with a lot of time uh, to come. And when I open up the trade, the January, and I look at that volume, that 20,000 volume, what I notice here is two trades, two very particular trades. And the first trade is that the previous open interest in the 3750 was 10,000 and today we had 10,000 volume. Now, and instantly from experience, this would tell me that this is a liquidation trade. In other words, what is happening is a trader has already established a position in this call 
And now they are liquidating that position and then establishing a new position in this call strike. Now, it could be a trader who sold calls as a covered call, bought this stock and sold calls, or it could be a trader who bought the calls um, prior uh, and now is rolling down. Now, this would be a this could be a hard investigative process, but looking at this right here on this page, I think it's an easy call to make. And how can I do that? Well, let's look at the stock. Now, it was up a little bit more this morning. It was up about almost 1%. Now it's coming back a little bit of it. But when this volume occurred, notice that this call value fell. Right? It was down and this call value went up. So on an up day, all things being equal, calls should go up. And the fact that this one went down was kind of telling me that this was a selling. In other words, somebody who was along this call and now is selling it. And the fact that this call went up is telling me that they're probably buying this call. So this looks like a large institutional trader who is actually rolling down a long call position. Now, let's go to the stock chart and see if we can, well, actually, you know what? Let me go back here. So again, you know, being kind of a Sherlock Holmes here is what I want to do is I want to go back in time and I want to see what was going on or when this initial position was put on now that I have kind of some clues. So I'll go to options price history, go back in time. And again, there's our volume today, but you can see that open interest. We've been carrying that open interest for a long period of time. And I gotta go way back and there it is. So on January 4th, this is when that position was initiated. So now we can go back to our stock. Go to a chart. And here is January 4th, right? And let's think about this trade. So we know that this trader was probably buying that 37.50 and now does that value have relevance to us? Yeah, it does, right? It's right in the middle of the second of two gaps, but it's also a target about where it looks like price broke down on this trade. So it's probably a large institute trader was looking for a breakout, a technical breakout of this trend and looking for that value that 3750. But what has happened since that time? Well, maybe this trader has lost a little bit of faith in this trade and then now is rolling down this long position uh, to maybe a target that is a little bit more achievable. Now, is this stock still in an uptrend? Yes, it certainly is. And has it just broken out? So yeah, this trader is probably looking to recoup some of those losses in this longer term position, but also looking for a more realistic target. So this is an example of both a trader that initiated a trade, which might have given us a trading opportunity at that time, but now is, is rolled a trade to get a little bit um, better probabilities. So how could we use this one? So this might be a little bit better of a trading opportunity for us. And the thing that I would think about in this case, if you believe in this uptrend, and again, you have a long amount of time between now and January of next year, um, is you know maybe we would do uh, some kind of a vertical spread. In this case, you know maybe we buy you know, the 30 or the $27.50 strike and sell that 32.50 to our trader. And 
again, I'm going to have to go out to January. And here's our, let's see, we have a 27, you know, our screen, screener came out with 27.37.50. That was the original trade. Um, here we go, 27.50, 32.50, right? That's a $5 spread. Um, you know, I'm spending $2 to get into this trade. Right, and for a potential of two dollars and ninety cents. Now, would I take this trade? Probably not, because I like to find um, long debit spreads where I only spend about a third of the differential between my two strikes. In this case, my differential is five dollars, and I'm paying two dollars and ten cents. Not a trade that I would take, but I know a lot of options traders would be uh, inclined to take this one because it's, you know, in theory, it's still a profitable trade. It still makes 138% between now and January um, 20th. I think that I can probably do a better job between now and then and to tie up a lot of capital on this particular trade for that long period of time. It's probably something that I'm not would be interested in doing. Now, if this, let's say this trade, I could get in for, let's say, a dollar fifty. Well, then that might be a different story. Okay. All right. So where are we at? Okay, perfectly. Excellent. So let's do this. Go back to the options volume page. And I do see some questions. So let me do this. Let me answer a couple questions. Then I want to show you one more aspect, which is really kind of what I do when I use the unusual options volume page. And that's kind of that sentiment. So I see some of my regulars in there. I see Gina and Ed and Aaron. Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, so Gina asks, are these volume indicators predictive in any ways and used in a combination of other indicators? So Gina, yeah, I think what you can do is if you see a large call volume and then you go to, you know, uh, break down your trade in terms of a technical analysis, uh, moving average, trend lines, uh, structure breakouts, like we did with the example of uh, General Mills, I think that is a great odds enhancer. In other words, I feel more comfortable taking that trade. Um, if I'm looking at a large amount of volume, let's say that is opposite, for instance, let's say on the General Mills, we looked at the stock and, um, well, let's go to General Mills. Let's look, let's break this down. And Right. Let's say, you know, here we can see General Mills average volume is three million shares on, on any given day. Let's say it's now noon and General Mills traded three million shares. Right. And then I went to the options market in terms of unusual volume and I saw a large put volume. So, Gina, at that point, that would really be a bullish odds enhancer because what is going on? We see probably a large amount of institutional traders buying that stock because we see a large increase in volume, but they're also buying puts as protection, right? Downside protection, especially if that put strike lined up with a trend line break or a recent area of support, that would really give me a clue that this is a, would be a more bullish trade scenario. So I hope that answers your question. So I'm getting a question here about what is the put call ratio range and should we consider good? Okay, so that's a great question. So let's go to our options page and our option overall page. And over here, you do see a little kind of snapshot of uh, put call ratios. Now, in equities, um, I think this is Samuel is asking this. In equities, we kind of fall in that range, right? That 0.67, which is kind of normal. 
So anything above, let's say, seven, seven, 750 or 75 is got, getting to be bearish. And anything below, let's say, 50 is overly bullish. And I kind of showed you that example. So let me go to that chart here, this one. Now let's do a line chart because it'll be a little easier to see. And you can kind of see that, you know, since the first of the year, you know, we've been kind of in this range. So when we get down to the 50 mark, that's where we'll be, you know, the market is, sentiment is very bullish, a lot more call action. When we get to the high side, that is kind of being bearish, right? So this is for all equities. And you can see that, you know, in a very short period of time, just, you know, a week ago when the market was, you know, we were looking like we we're going to break out and get above our 200-day move average and a lot of our stocks and our indexes, the market was very bullish. And that could be a contra trend or contrarian indicator, overly bullish, meaning the market might be ready for a turn. Now, what we see in a very short period of time, we're at the high end of this put call ratio, which is kind of telling us that the sentiment of the market is very bearish. And again, you know, we're kind of range bound here and that might mean in the short term um, that the broader market is probably near a significant low or at least a supportive low. And, you know, we might be use that as a buying opportunity, a contra contrarian, all right? So that would be for the equity indexes, excuse me, the equities outright, but on the um, equity indexes, Samuel, it's a little bit different. And that's because um, fund managers or ETF managers or any of these kind of large institutional traders, sometimes for them to buy insurance, in other words, to hedge their long positions, it just doesn't make sense or it's not economically feasible in terms of capital outlay to buy puts in each individual stock. So what they do is they tend to buy more puts in the indexes. And so you can see here, you know, there the range of index put to call ratio is well above you know, that one, that parity of puts to calls, that's because it's a lot more feasible for them to buy put uh, options for hedging purposes in indexes, kind of, you know, a broader basket. And again, you can kind of see that where we are in that range in terms of um, the ratio, okay? So that's kind of a clue for you uh samuel so again you know for equities you know that 40 to 90 is kind of a, your range and you know when you get outside of those ranges you know something uh, very unusual is happening all right so ed ask call open interest is opposite put volume opposite hmm do nothing no i think and i think what you're asking is maybe i think this is what you're asking and this is kind of where i wanted to lead um for my example here to finish up with and this is a good question is if i'm looking at some of these wider held stocks right Apple is always at the top of our uh, options page. Amazon, Tesla, Nvidia, you know, AMD, right? Alibaba, right? If I go over here and look at my put call volume ratio, this kind of gives me a snapshot in terms of what my market is thinking, right? In other words, in Apple, right? Apple's been on a long uptrend, but we can see that our volume today is hinting to a bearish sentiment. So what I would like to do is if I see a divergence, in other words, between our put call volume and our 
put call ratio in terms of open interest, then um, I might think that there is a swing or a change. But you can see that in the case of Apple, right, our put call ratio is right in line with our volume ratio. So the market is kind of telling us that, you know, it's business as usual. Now, what I do like to do in this case in some of these larger held stocks is I will come in here occasionally and look at which strike or excuse me, which expiration has a lot of volume and open interest. And you can see that, you know, out of all of these strikes, and that's probably because it's the first monthly that's coming up, it has a million open interest. But again, you know, if I go inside of that, And I look at, you know, these outliers in terms of let's let's let me increase, increase our screen here. Which ones do we see the most open interest? Well, now on the put side, you know, we've got the 125s. Well, if you're an Apple trader, what does 125 represent? Well, 125 represents the lowest price that Apple has been at, you know, back in our June lows. So this makes sense to us. Here's somebody who is buying puts below the low, right? In other words, protecting themselves. The next outlier I see here is 150. So that is an important value too. So again, I, what I can do is go back to my um, chart on Apple and is 150 a significant level? Yeah, it is. It's where kind of Apple broke out of, right? This was our recent you know, downtrend, major area of resistance. And from 150, you know, we broke out, came back test, and we've never looked back. So again, if I was long Apple, that would definitely be an area where I would want to look for insurance, right? So what I might do is, in this case, since there seems to be more put option activity in Apple, if I see a day where we see a lot more call options activity in apple that might be a new sentiment that the market has become bullish again on apple you know after we've got this little bit of a pull so that's kind of what i think you're asking ed all right all right let's see what other questions we have Yeah, Kumar, you know, the, the the Regis example is a tough one. I was just kind of showing you a large amount of volume. You know, could that be somebody who is, um, you know, looking for those to, those those options to um, expire worthless? Yeah, I could. But I think there's a lot of risk in that for that small amount of premium, right? Um, you know, you know, yeah, that I think that I think if we went back to um, the implied volatility, that was a huge implied volatility candidate. Okay, Harry asks on large volume calls and puts with low open interest, who is taking the opposite side of these trades? Great question, Harry. Market makers, right? Well, traders, uh, you know. And what a market maker does is, you know, and again, you, you have to understand how options work is they will sell the upper, other side of it, let's say somebody's buying it. And what they will do is they will hedge or manage that risk in terms of our Greeks, our deltas and our gammas and our vegas, depending on how many shares that they have to do. So a lot of times what you'll see is somebody is buying calls a market maker sells those calls and in order for them to hedge their position they have to buy the outright stock and again that is kind of you know a positive uh, feedback loop in terms of pushing that price higher that's kind of the understanding of these meme stocks and this, these gamma scheme screens um gamma squeezes that we've seen in some of these meme stocks market makers have to buy this underlying stock protect themselves against you know a rise in those call options right so richard asks do i normally hold to expiration or do i monitor options trades and get out early again richard again depends on 
the trade that I'm looking at, the profit target that I want. Um, you know, as a general rule, you know, if I can double my money or get, you know, two thirds of my potential target max profit, uh, you know, I'm more inclined to take half of the position off or a, a portion of that position off. Um, rarely do I hold ex, uh, options positions through expiration. I usually exit. Now, the um, a outlier or the exception to the rule is that many times I will sell a cover call. And if that cover call becomes in the money and I feel that that was a value that I liked, in terms of a target and plus the premium that I collected, you know, I might let that stock go and then wait for an opportunity to buy that stock at a cheaper price later on. All right, so I'm at the top of the hour. Um, I, if I didn't get to your question, I apologize. Uh, send your questions to support at barchart.com and we'll help you with those. So let me give you a couple of takeaways. And the first one is again, our kind of our process, we're going to compare our volume to our open interest, our daily volume, and that put call ratio. Again, we're going to look for those uh, skews, those outliers, those swings or biases to one or another. Look at our volume in terms of is it opening or closing, right? And again, did our open interest, previous open interest, there was no open interest. So we see volume, so we know that that is opening. But if I look at a volume, again, I think that an example was in the, the floor one. If I see volume that is equal to previous open interest, that's most likely somebody who's closing. And if I see equal volumes, one that looks like it's closing and one that looks like it's opening, well, that is somebody who's just rolling their open interest. I want you to start thinking about the details of the trade, right? Is the strike in the money or at the money? Typically, that is probably more likely an institutional trader. Out of the monies, maybe an individual trader or uh, retails. When is expiration? And that would be a key to us, right? If somebody is doing a large volume trade with two days to go, well, they're really looking for some kind of price catalyst. Is there options? Uh, I mean, excuse me, is there an earnings event that's coming? Um, but they're certainly kind of gambling or speculating. If it's somebody who is adding to a volume of an option that is 60 days or 90 days, that would be more significant to me. That is really telling me as an institutional trader is committing capital for a longer period of time. And that would be something that would spark my interest. And what are the ramifications of exercising that option, right? What would happen if that option w closed in the money? Again, want to make sure we want to look at earnings and dividends announcements and do they fall within that expiration timeframe? And that could be the catalyst of why this we're seeing that options volume. And then finally, I didn't get really into depth into this one, but um, looking at your implied volatility as a determinant of what type of option strategy. So here's a kind of a general rule. When the rank is low, look for debit type opportunities. In other words, I feel that options are relatively priced fairly and also they might be cheap. So I don't worry about buying those options, right? Debit type spreads. If I see a high uh, volatility rank, Right? Uh, the volatility has um, bloated these options. They're more expensive. And so I probably would look for some strategies where I'm looking at to collect credit, right, in that sense. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think this I brought a little bit of a different spin than what we've done in the past. Um, let's do this. And let's finish up. Okay, upcoming webinars. Next week, our upcoming webinar is we're going to look at the commodities market and we're going to look at trading equities. Um, 
through the information that we received through the commodities market. Now, I've done one in the past where we looked at ETFs, commodity type ETFs, but this one, I'm gonna give you my experience, right? My 40 years experience as a trader. I'm gonna show you actual name, some specific stocks that have a very high correlation to commodity exposure. And these will give you some really good trading opportunities if you're on top of your game. The other thing I wanna point out to you is that we are doing a new segment on Fridays. It's called Market on Close with me. <laughs> and for those of you that haven't had a chance last week, we got a great response in terms of uh, viewership. Now this is going to be in the future, is gonna only be for premier members. But if you are not a premier member, you still have an opportunity to come and check this out uh, for one more week, and that would be this coming Friday, so you can reserve your spot. And so I would encourage everyone to check that out and see if you think just in that session alone is worth the value of a premier membership. Okay, Gene, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Is there anything I'm forgetting? No, John, you got it all. You covered everything and more. <laughs> okay. Um, so listen, everyone, I, again, thank you so much for being part of today's session and, um, you know, be safe out there, the good of all trading, and we'll see you next time.